Welcome into the Geek Therapy Radio Podcast. I am your mental curator, Johnny Hemberger, of course. Thank you for joining me today. In this podcast, what's on my mind is something that I touched on in my uh, radio show this past week, the actual big show that I dropped the podcast on Friday, but that actually airs here on the radio on Saturday nights. And one of the things I got to talking about there, the, t- the show is basically titled um, n- something like Navigating Our Weary Technological Future. And something I was, and it's something I've talked about before in the past, but I want to go into a little bit more depth here and, and bring it up one more time because I think there's very important things to, to discuss with it. It's a very multifaceted issue, and just to get right to the to the point here of what I'm dealing with is there was a, a, an article that came out recently where Apple is retuning, re uh, readdressing how much audio the Apple Watch records and how much audio Siri records in various different uh, functions. So. Amazon Alexa has been in hot water with this well as well. People wondering, is Alexa listening all the time? You know, as we understand it now, the way Alexa works, for instance, and Siri, is you have to activate them. You say, hey, Siri, or hey, Alexa, uh, what's the weather like today? And supposedly, those devices are only listening to the question. They only, really, they're only paying attention to you after you activate them with the uh, the correct phrase. So the way it pre- uh, previously worked, at least with Siri, was that when you asked the query, that audio was recorded and it was reviewed by humans. Not all of it. Uh, according to Apple, 0.2% of all Siri inquiries were reviewed to some extent by humans. So, oh, that sounds like a tiny amount. 0.2% of all the inquiries asked of Siri. That's actually quite a shocking amount. Still not everything. And the intent was not to spy on anybody or do anything like that, but to help Siri improve her reliability when answering questions. Um... What tends to happen with technology, though, is that it malfunctions uh, quite a bit, actually. So these contractors who are listening to the Siri audio and submissions, basically Siri malfunctions or is initiated accidentally. And the contractors were hearing people have sex and private conversations. And this, of course, led to an uproar. It's an invasion of privacy. Whether or not it was an accident or Apple was intentionally listening to these people doesn't matter. It shouldn't uh, it shouldn't be recorded in the first place. So basically what Apple has come up with is a program where you can opt in to sending your recordings to Apple for, you know, to help Siri or opt out of it. And I would imagine a lot of people are going to opt out of it, or at least some people are going to opt out of it. The details of the story is aren't important, but because it brings me to this uh this thought, this idea, this concept. And that is, whether it's intentional or accidental, technology can intrude in our lives and invade our privacy. So, when I hear people argue against things like Alexa against things like Siri and have this weary big brother is always listening to his attitude, I definitely lean towards not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. That is to say, just because there are isolated incidents where these smart devices and smart speakers have heard private things happening inside private users' homes, I don't think that's a reason why we should abandon the technology completely or that people should be unnecessarily afraid of the technology. However, that being said, and this is my critical point with all of this, we do need to be educated and aware of the risk involved with technology like this. With Alexa, with Siri, with Google, with 
Uh, what's Bixby? If anyone uses Bixby on their Samsung phone, we need to be aware that that technology like this exists. And really, it's up to the individual as to whether or not they want that technology in their lives. And I would say it is OK to have that technology in your life only if you are OK and you understand and you comprehend what's going on, what this technology is. I don't think you should get the technology. I do disagree. It kind of rubs me the wrong way. These commercials where they put Alexa in an elderly person's home or a retirement home as a way for grandma or grandpa to stay in touch with the grandkids. I do. I mean, I see the value in that. Do not get me wrong. I've had enough Skype conversations with grandparents. It's a beautiful thing. Technology is beautiful in that way that it can connect us. However, I do think if you are going to give a, a smart device like Alexa or Siri or whatever to your grandparents, it's on you to describe and and do your best to bring your grandparents up to speed with exactly what this technology is and what it's used for. I think it's irresponsible to give just a set an Alexa in your in your grandparents house, for instance, not just to, I'm not picking on grandparents. I'm just saying there there's no uh, it's a very common issue for those advanced and aged not to understand the technology of the generations behind them. This is not something that is just new with our current generations. This has been happening through history. This has been going on for thousands of years, and it's not a detriment against the elderly, and it's not a detriment against uh, the young coming up. It's just something that we need to understand. So when you give your grandparents an Alexa, make sure, I would say, make sure they understand what this is. That it is something that listens to you, at least when you want it to, that it can make mistakes, it can be misused, and a lot of personal information can go out there into the ether of the internet if they're not careful with it or if they don't understand how to use it correctly. I also think that this, that this potential ignorance in uh, the elderly community can lead to some very dangerous situations. So again, it goes towards my point that if you are going to give grandma or grandpa a device like this, it is on you, it is on us to explain to them as clearly as possible what this device is and isn't for and the inherent risks with that device and then respect your parents or grandparents wishes that they don't want a device like that in their house either because they don't want to learn to set it up or whatever reason they just they're they're morally against it you have to respect their wishes don't force this technology i don't like the commercials where they just set the thing on the table and you know grandpa is ah, with this technology i don't like this and then he learns to love it because he can see uh, photos or pictures or talk to you know, video called their their nieces and nephews and grandsons and grandkids, and it's all warm and fuzzy. Yes, it can be used that way. But again, you need you need and we need to explain to them as much as possible the realities around these devices, because there is valid fear there. South Park did an episode a few years ago about this cash for gold scheme and that a lot of elderly are preyed upon, especially those with with mental degenerative diseases to where and I see it all the time. And again, I'm not picking on the elderly here because we are all at risk of this. Doesn't matter if you're young or old, we can be manipulated. When I call screen for a very popular radio show here in Houston, it is mind boggling how how much older generations how much information they give out without me asking. And I stop them mid roll. I say, stop. I don't need to know all that. I don't need to know all that. They'll give me their first name, their last name. I've already got their phone number on the screen. They'll tell me exactly where they're from, what town they're from. They'll start giving me more than enough detailed information for someone to take advantage of them or hack them or scam them or conduct fraud upon them just by what they're voluntarily giving me 
over the phone. And it is a generational thing. I don't hear younger people volunteering that information. Matter of fact, I wager a lot of people give a fake name. They don't give us their real name. They'll say, I'm Tom from Arkansas. That's it. And that's all I need. And that's all that's required for a radio call-in show. Don't need your full first, middle, and last name and your street address and your home phone number. Don't give me all that information. So that's what's risky, I think, with just setting an Alexa down in your parents' or grandparents' house and they might be on the phone. Think, man, they could be on their phone giving out credit card information and they've got the Alexa in their room and there's potential there. There's potential there that Alexa is listening to that or that information can get out onto the internet by a mistake or maliciously. The potential for harm is still there and that needs to be reiterated and made clear to anybody who you plan on giving an Alexa or a Siri or whatever to. This concept doesn't just apply to giving the elderly modern smart technology that could potentially harm them. This applies to everyone. It applies to you. It applies to me. It applies to youth. It applies to old with anything. For instance, you don't just put a 12 year old in front of a lawnmower without teaching them how to use the lawnmower. The lawnmower performs a very good function. It keeps the yard nice and tidy. It's a very good tool to know how to use, but if you don't know how to use it, it can chop your foot off. It can mangle you and kill you. So you need to train. It's the difference between karate and a handgun. Karate is years and decades, or any martial art, years and decades of training that gives you the, you know, in a nutshell, gives you the knowledge of how to kill somebody, but the wisdom not to. The wisdom when to know when and when not to use force and exactly how much force to use versus handing someone a handgun. Now they know they have the power to kill somebody, but absolutely zero wisdom on how to use it properly, on when and when not to use lethal force that's why a handgun is a tool as well you get trained with the handgun you train early and often to respect any weapon especially guns so that by the time someone comes across a gun they have a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of wisdom to know how to respect the tool and what to do and what not to do with the tool so motorcycle, no one gave, no one just set me on a motorcycle with zero, zero instruction. First, I had to learn how to drive a manual transmission car. So I understand, I understood the concept of a clutch and how to give it gas and feather the clutch and everything like that. So when I got on a motorcycle, also I had the training and understanding how to ride a bicycle. So riding a bicycle combined with driving a manual transmission car set me up to learn even more in depth how to ride a motorcycle. You don't just give someone a motorcycle and say, get going. They're going to kill themselves. Same thing with a car. You don't just hand the keys to a 16-year-old with absolutely no training and no respect for what they're doing in there and say, go get them. They're going to kill themselves and others. Those are dire examples, but it still applies to technology. Technology is a wonderful, beautiful thing that can bring us closer together it can strengthen relationships and bonds and keep us in touch with our parents and with our grandparents, but it is something that needs to be respected. It is not something to ever be trust, trusted implicitly or let your guard down around. I have all sorts of smart devices around me. I have an Amazon Alexa. I have a Siri on my iPad, Cortana on my Windows devices. There are smart things listening to us all the time. But I'm, I know that. I'm weary of that. I, I'm, not, I'm not scared of it. I'm just aware of it. So I think just being aware that our world is, is connected with millions of microphones and millions of cameras that on any given day, at least the average American and anybody in any sort of civilized country and even underdeveloped countries... Your face is going to be on a camera and there's going to be some microphone somewhere picking up your voice. So just 
understand it. And yes, for those wondering or, you know, telling themselves, well, you're not, uh, there is responsibility on the, on the corporations. Absolutely. Tons of responsibility, if not most of it does rest on Apple to ethically run the technology. But let's not dilute ourselves. Greed is a real thing. And I've touched on this on the show several times also, is that I don't think it's any malicious thing to try to to harm people. It's just to try to more effectively advertise to you. That if Alexa is listening, it's not, you know, listening when she's not supposed to. It's not to it's not for the end result of rounding you up at like a herd of cattle and then walking you off a cliff or herding you up and then executing us in mass genocide or anything like that. No, I think it's to more effectively market Charmin toilet paper to you. It's to more effectively try to get you to open your wallet and spend your money on this or that. That we, the, com- the population, aren't, aren't just cattle to, to be slaughtered. They want to, they're going to get all the milk out of us first. They want to milk us for the longest time possible because once the cow is dead, the cow is dead. You can't get any more meat from a dead cow. You can only get the meat once. You can only get the product once from killing the cow versus milking it for its entire life. And you want to keep it alive as long as possible and able to produce milk as long as possible. So I don't think we're being used in any sort of evil scheme to to, to cull the Earth's population, reduce the Earth's population, it's, no, with the populations there, earning money, let's see how we can get them to spend their money with us. Now, this also, like I alluded to earlier, includes a dark side where there are people out there that are trying to inflict harm and fraud upon you. So don't, if you're on the phone giving out your credit card number, which I don't know why you would, anyone would do nowadays, But if you're on the phone giving your credit card number to the home shopping network or something like that, just know, just be aware that there's an an Alexa in your house. If your kids have given you one of these things, just be aware that it's there and think twice before giving your personal information out anywhere near the microphones of this device. So what I would do, the way I would explain it to my grandparents and my parents I would say if you are about to get on the phone with your doctor or with some sort of agency, a bank, whatever, credit card company, just unplug Alexa, you know, make, maybe make sure that there's nothing, no other smart speakers or devices around you. If you feel so uncomfortable and so inclined, just unplug her. She can't listen to you if she's, if there's no electricity going into her. So Before you're going to give out your social security numbers, I would say even when you're doing your taxes and you might just be mumbling under your breath all sorts of numbers and things and letters and information, just unplug Alexa. Just unplug it. At the end of the day, we need to remember that we control more than we think we do. We play this victim. I think we fall into this trap where we constantly play the victim to evil corporations, but we don't realize that we have all the power. We have a lot of power, at least. Oh, uh, Walmart is taking over. Don't go to Walmart then. Don't spend your money with them. Oh, uh, uh, whatever company. Boycott Jimmy John's. Oh my gosh, that thing. <laughs> Can I go off on a tangent just for a second to start wrapping this up? The uh, I think it was like the founder, the CEO or whatever of Jimmy John's went on a on a hunt and shot an elephant. And usually these things are sanctioned. It is not just hunting random elephants. It is basically, it's, it's hunting an elephant. It's not really even hunting. Elephant is huge. These guides will put you right on the animal and basically do everything but pull the trigger for you. These are animals that are usually already sick or they are bulls that are causing a lot of problems or they've killed a lot of other members of the herd. They're problem animals. They're troubled animals. And it is a form of conservation. When the only option, and my heart says that why kill it? Why not just separate it from the herd and put it out somewhere else? Well, it's a danger to itself or other, whatever. Shooting the animal is always the last option in my mind. But I understand that there comes a time when, yeah, this giraffe or this bull elephant or whatever is causing problems. It's killing other members of the the herd. 
this elephant existing is actually a risk towards the growth of the endangered species. So you need to remove the threat. Same thing with wild boars and wild hogs. People can't. It's, I think it's just ignorance. They can't understand the concept between why would you need to kill the wild hog, for instance, or kill the deer, for instance. It's it's as horrible and it's wrong and it's terrible and it's evil. Well, those animals, if the population gets too big, it does way more damage than good to the earth. It does way more damage to vegetation and the ecosystem. It winds up putting other animals in danger. There needs to be a balance. There needs to be a balance in the ecosystem. So long story short, anyways, the CEO of Jimmy John's goes out there and shoots an elephant. People are in an uproar because they don't want to look do any research themselves. They just see a guy holding a gun in front of an elephant. It's automatically evil. You should automatically boycott Jimmy John's or whatever. No. See, here's the thing. The funny thing about that, and this is just editorial. If you haven't realized, the past couple of minutes here have just been editorial. It has just been opinion. This is not gospel truth or anything like that. It's just my own little brain ramblings on the situation. I people saying they're going to boycott Jimmy John's. <laughs> Those same people are on their way to Burger King and McDonald's and Subway and any other sort of chain restaurant. How many more cattle are going to be eaten while you boycott Jimmy John's for shooting an elephant legally? It all just seems, I mean, I hate to be this, uh, this way, this cynical about it, but it's, it's, it's hypocritical. <laughs> I just imagine somebody scarfing down a double cheeseburger. Man, F Jimmy John's. I shot that elephant. <laughs> They're eating beef. They're eating a cow that they have given zero thought to. They have given zero thought to the fact that they are eating a slaughtered animal that did not live out in the wild, that was penned up. For its entire life. No thought to that at all. But dude shot an elephant in a sanctioned hunt. Boycott Jimmy John's. Does that make sense? Am I being too... Uh, gosh. Am I being too uppity or flippant about this? I don't know. It's kind of... You know what? The reality is this is my, my show. And uh, I get to say what I wanted here. Because I fully understand the risk that you can stop listening. I know that. I do know that. But here's the thing. Oh, man, this is going on a little bit long again. 22 minutes about now. 23 minutes. Here's the thing. Everybody is free to have their opinion. And just because someone has an opinion doesn't mean that you, that you should hate them for that opinion. Do you kind of understand what I'm saying? What if we just lived in a world where we could be big boys and girls and hear something that offends us and just realize that it's our problem that it offends us? It's not their problem that they said something offensive. It's our problem that we were offended by it. And we can choose whether or not to support this person's project or not. I understand that what I say here on Geek Therapy Radio has the potential to offend people. I try not to offend people, but it has the potential to, and I know that I can lose listeners and I can lose uh, clients if I say things that are too outrageous, which I don't. I don't think I have too much, you know, too many outrageous thoughts anyways that I could pour into the microphone. I'm, I'm a pretty balanced, neutral, neutral guy. <clears throat> but we never know how the future might change and how sensibilities might change. I may say something, the word elderly, for instance, I'm saying the word elderly in 2019. By 2025, the word elderly might be offensive. And the politically correct way to say elderly would be a person who is advanced in age. Maybe that might, and someone might say, Johnny Hamburger said the word elderly in 2019, and he needs to be fired from his job. He needs to quit doing his radio show because that is offensive to those who are advanced in age. 
that's where we're at in society right now about a lot of things and about a lot of words. People are being raked over the coals and careers are being destroyed over things that were culturally acceptable 50 years ago, but now are not. And I'm not saying that those things were correct 50 years ago. I'm just saying I understand the warning to myself about what to and what not to kind of get behind and endorse. But I also know that a lot of things can't be foreseen. That elderly thing, you know, that it sounds crazy to think that the, the word elderly could, could be politically incorrect in the future. <sighs> but crazier things have happened. I'm just saying I understand that my opinions can alienate some people. But I assume that risk. When I publish this podcast tonight, I assume the risk that someone might be offended on my opinion on the Jimmy John's boycott debacle. A lot of people might not even know about it. It's one of these flash in the pan things. We get this endorphin rush over being pissed off about things. That's the other thing. It feels good to hate something. It feels good to be angry and upset. Does that make sense? It's literally an endorphin rush to get pissed off about something. And the bigger we p perceive the thing to get pissed off about, oh, the better we feel. Mm. Oh, let me say something against so, you know, whoever, po politically divisive person on Twitter, and let me bask in those likes and those upvotes. Mm. Let me be the one to say even something more, even more outrageous about so-and-so or some little topic. Oh, let me jump on the bandwagon of hatred. Mmm. Because it feels good. <laughs> it feels good and then we get reconfirmed with those little clicks and upvotes and likes and yeah. Makes it, it really... <laughs> Twitter has made... Has given us this false... This false hope that our opinions matter more than they actually do. I think the world would burn... If Facebook, Facebook got a down thumbs down button, could you un realize, could you even fathom the societal collapse that would happen when you can thumbs down someone's post on Facebook? <laughs> would you see that your grandmother has thumbs down the outfit you're wearing out on Friday night? Oh my gosh. <laughs> when you post something up on there in the selfie, nee, look where I am. And someone puts that one friggin' little uh, that da thumbs down thing on there. Could, the social ramifications of, of a thumbs down button on Facebook. Whew. All of this is, is things that we need to navigate through the future. We just need to be weary and understand technology. Weary and understand the role of social media. And just take a breath once in a while to realize that we are worth more than that. We are worth real love. You are worth being loved. You are worth loving somebody for real. That just because you have a different opinion doesn't mean that you're not worthy of being loved. That your opinion can be separate from who you are as a person. Because I'll tell you what, right now, to start wrapping this 30-minute long podcast up, take your favorite person in the universe, someone that you love and idolize. I promise you that person has done something that just, oh, that you wouldn't be able to stand, that you would hate, that you would label them as whatever for. I promise you Mr. Rogers has done something that would have pissed you off. I promise you that. I promise whatever elected official that you revere as a god has done something so deplorable that it would be worthy of your personal hatred. You have done something in your self-righteous life that would make somebody else hate you. I wish we all would realize that and just, you know what, just pick and choose our fights and battles. <sighs> Pick and choose what we put energy into, negative energy into. I'll just leave you with that for today. Thank you for listening. Um, just remember that we're all geeks about something, so embrace your inner geek. You are worthy of loving and being loved. And I guess that's all I got to say for the day. <laughs> Be good to yourself and others, and I'll catch you in the next one.